is profitable. So okay. uh, what would God speak to your heart tonight from Psalm 17? And uh, let's ask him to do that and ask him to meet with us uh, this evening. Psalm 17, and uh, this psalm we will uh, look at the entire, look at it in its entirety, all 15 verses this evening. So I'd like to read uh, those. I hope you will follow along as I read aloud. And we will then dive, dive into the psalm here for a few minutes tonight. Psalm 15, or seven, Psalm 17, verse number one. It says, Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thy eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand, them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Can you turn me down, please? Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about, they are enclosed in their own fat, with their mouth they speak proudly. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes, bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. I remember several years ago when I was a kid, I don't know if I was a child or if I was a teenager, but I remember at that time in our lives, uh, mom would remember this, that uh, we would get the Reader's Digest. And um, most of you were familiar with that. I have no idea. Uh, that's still around, probably is, I guess. But um, one thing that intrigued me when I was a kid, uh, reading, and uh, I was not a faithful reader. That was a big book and, and not near enough pictures for me. But anyways, um, but I remember reading a, a fascinating article one time about, uh, there was an article there about the phrases that people use that you get from the Bible and uh, that are common phrases. Now, now, what's sad in our country today is uh, you know, people of yesteryear at least had a Bible knowledge. Uh, you gotta remember years and years ago, uh, some of us, our grandparents and great-grandparents, this King James Bible was their textbook. Yep. It was the first thing they learned to read. And, uh, you know, and so that, that's, that's what they had. You know, it's interesting you uh, say things, you know, so-and-so drives like Jehu, old lost people, 50 years ago, I would have known what that meant. Today, say people don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, J, 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 who? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not J, who, J, who, amen. But anyways, but there's, there's a lot of them that you just get from the Bible. And that they were, people were familiar with the Bible, familiar with the word of God. Well, one such thing, one of those phrases is found here in Psalm 17. And it's in verse number eight. And it says, the apple of the eye. The apple of the eye. You uh, perhaps have heard people say that. Uh, a lot of people will say that about their grandkids, right? You know, little little Susie is the apple of Grandpa's eye. 
You ever heard something like that? Or hear people talk like that, right? They, uh, they do. Many have, have, have used uh, that expression. What does that mean? Uh, well, it means that uh, somebody is, is regarded as precious, uh, that uh, their eye is upon them. They love them. They, uh, they are tenderly held in their heart, right? Have a special place uh, in their heart. Uh, for them, you know, those that's kind of what that means and and it's interesting here when we come to Psalm 17 uh, he, David is praying Lord. I want to be that You know, we, we think of uh, the Lord uh, Being precious to us and he is amen. He is precious. Amen. But you know what a great thought is are we precious to him? Right? Are, 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 are we, I uh, realize he loves us, but you know, uh, we ought to desire for uh, uh, the Lord to, to look at us and say, wow, uh, uh, I appreciate that. I, I love what, what they're doing in their lives and, and, uh, and regarding us that way, looking upon us that way. We should uh, desire that. Amen. I, I, I don't know about you. I, I think I do know most of you. Hey, we want to live for the Lord. Amen. We want to live for the Lord. We want to be used of God, not only in our own lives, but we also want to be uh, a blessing to others. Amen. You think about that, that, that grandchild that's the apple of your eye. They're, they're a blessing to you. They're a, a joy to you. Uh, and we want to be a joy to the Lord and, and a blessing uh, to the Lord. You know, I, I think you could say this about America, that America used to be the apple of God's eye. I think we used to be uh, special and precious to the Lord. And why? Because we desire to live for the Lord. We desire to, to walk with the Lord and, uh, and, and, and all of those things. We, we had that special place. Of, well, what has happened to our nation? We turned our back on God, haven't we? Turned our back on God. I mean, you know, anytime you read a statistic, you know, you know one thing, it's out, outdated, <laughs> right? When you read it, because... Um, I mean, you think about things. One statistic I read, 62% uh, of Americans believe there is no devil. 61% believe the Holy Spirit is not real. 66% believe there's no fixed moral standard. You know, we're on uh, Faith Bible Institute going through the book of Judges. You know, we're living in the book of Judges again. Every man did that which is right in their own eyes. Amen. Right? We're, we're living in those days. No, you know, you ask people, is there absolute truth? And they'll say no, right? And uh, they're absolute about that. Hey? But anyways, uh, no absolute truth. Hey, we need the Lord's help. Amen. We really do. And so I want us to look at three simple thoughts here this evening from Psalm 17. Uh, and I've entitled this psalm, uh, God's Delight in Difficulty. God's, well, that's, that, that's what we ought to desire. God's delight in difficulty. Now, what was the difficulty that Saul was going through? Well, we know uh, this is a, a psalm of David, a prayer of David. Uh, he's on the run here from Saul. He hadn't done anything wrong. And, and, and so this is a difficult time. And so, but he says, God, I want you to delight in my life. You know, uh, one of the things that when, when we go through difficulties and hardships, you know what our prayer ought to be? God, I want to be faithful in the midst of this difficulty. You know, but, and I'm telling you, and I, I've said this many times, I'll say it again, that you know what? Um, people will look at you more and watch you more in difficult times than in easy times. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. They will watch your life more. And uh, to see, you know, are you real? Are you genuine? That's David's prayer here. Lord, keep me, verse 8, as the apple of the eye. Well, I want you to notice three things here that David prays. We'll use that as an outline here. And all three of these words um, are found in our text. And the first word I want you to see is in verse number one. And he says, hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. The first thing I see here that David prays is, Lord, hear me. Lord, hear me. Again, he, he is running from Saul, and, uh, and, and he prays this prayer. And, and notice here in three times in verse number one, he asks the Lord to hear him. 
He says, hear the right, O Lord. That's one. Attend unto my cry. That's two. Give ear unto my prayer. That's three. That goeth not out of feigned lips. All right. And, uh, and, and so he asked the Lord to hear him. And, here, and here's the thought that I want to give us tonight. Here's a man the Bible calls a man after God's own heart. And certainly you could never be a man or a woman after God's own heart if we're not praying people. Amen. We need to be praying people. You cannot be that without that. And he says uh, it, not to pray uh, with feigned lips. Interesting. Now look at verse number two. He says, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Now, when he says sentence, he's not talking about a noun and a verb. And a, no, he's talking about uh, the sentence that he deserves, the, the, the punishment that he deserves. Uh, you know, when someone goes to prison and they have a prison sentence, that's the sentence that he is talking about here. And, and, and David says here, he says, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. What's David saying here? David is saying here, listen, he is not saying he is not sinless. He is not saying he's never sinned. And we know David didn't believe that. I mean, you've never, you've never read Psalm 51 if you believe that. He's not saying he's not sinless. But what he is saying here is the things that I've been accused of, I'm not guilty of. And God knows that. He has a clean conscience, a right conscience with the Lord. Saul had been lying about David. Saul had been spreading lies about David throughout the kingdom. And David said, I'm not guilty of those things. And if I am, let God show that I am. Let God put down the sentence. Let God judge this. Let God uh, do those things. Look at verse number three. He says, thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and thou shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. You know what he's saying there in verse number three? He's saying, Lord, you can bring a surprise inspection and you won't find that I've done anything wrong here. He said, you can, you can visit me in the middle of the night. Boy, uh, you know, uh, how many people can say that? Right? How many people can say uh, that? But here's David with a good conscience. He said, I am not guilty in this matter. Again, he's not saying that he's innocent uh, or sinless, but that he is innocent of this matter. Listen to Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 14. It says, the Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold your peace. Notice what he says here in Psalm number uh, 17. He says here in uh, verse number three, and boy, what a, what a great challenge for us. The end of verse three, he says, I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Boy, you know what? That would be something that would be good for us to pray every day of our lives. God, help me not to sin with my mouth. Amen. Amen? Help me not to sin with my my mouth. And, 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 and here's the thing. David said, listen, I'm not going to defend myself before men. God is going to defend me. I'm going to leave this in God's hands. I'm not going to try to take these matters in my own hands. I'm not going to, you know, Saul was mean. And, you know, David's, what, what's the flesh want to do? Railing for railing, accusation for accusation, right? Uh, you know, tit for tat. You know, he said, so she said, and, and husbands and wives and whoever it is, right? I mean, that's the battle we face. However, someone says something to me, boy, I want to say it right back to them. What does David say? He said, God, help me not to transgress with my mouth. And by the way, one of the things that helped him do that was he knew he was right with the Lord. He knew God would take care of it in his time, didn't he? Amen. He knew God would take care of it in his time. Hey, Saul could run his mouth all he wanted to. He knew he hadn't done anything wrong. He said, hey, God, you, 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 you bring down the sentence. God, I mean, you know, bring a surprise inspection. Show up in the middle of the night if you want to. I'm not guilty in this matter. And boy, that'll help you uh, be right with the Lord and help us not to, uh, you know, sometimes people just got to go with the tongue. You know why they do that? Because they know they're guilty. 
right? They gotta clear themselves or tear down the other person, you know, and, and do all those things. No, no, no. Listen, be right with the Lord and God help us not to sin with our tongues, not to transgress with our mouth. And now look at verse number four. He says, concerning the works of men, by the word, well, I love this, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. You know what he's saying there in beautiful, in beautiful, eloquent speech? It is God's word that's kept me out of trouble. Amen. It is God's word that has kept me out of trouble. He says, he says, by, and boy, don't you love the contrast from verse three to verse four? How are we going to keep our mouths from sin? Not, not our words. What do we need? We need God's words. Amen. We need his word. Amen. We preached a course on that on Sunday night, uh, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is God <laughs> breathes. Uh, you know what you're hearing? You're hearing uh, the, the breath of the pastor. You're hearing my lips, right? Speak these words. Listen, what do we have here? We have the breath of God. We have the lips of of God, don't we? We have God uh, keeping us that. And here's, listen, uh, <laughs> you want to be kept from the destroyer? It's right here in this book. Amen. Amen. It is. It's right here in this book. And I'm telling you what, if you don't learn it and if you don't obey it, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be destroyed. You really are. And, uh, and all of us are. We need to be in the word of God. It is the word of God that keeps us from the destroyer. I wondered here this, this, this evening, if I were to embarrass you, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I wonder if I said, how many of you, when I asked you to open up your Bible tonight, that's the first time you opened up your Bible, wonder how many of you would say you had to raise your hand. Wonder how many of you adults before you went to work today read your Bible. How many of you young people before you went to school today read your Bible? Now here's the thing. I, I, I as your pastor, I love you. I don't want you to be destroyed. Amen? Amen. And here's the thing. Get in the work. Get in the word of God. Get in the book. All right? And, 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 and I don't know how many times I've, I've counseled people. Their lives are a mess. And I'll say, hey, are you reading your Bible every day? And they hang their head in shame. I don't know, preacher. I haven't read it in a while. Hey, you're on the path of destruction. You're on your path of destruction if you're not in the word of God. David said, hey, it is the words of thy lips, verse 4, that has kept me from the paths of the destroyer. So the first thing he prays for is, Lord, hear me. Now look at number 2, the second point, in beginning in verse number 5 through verse 8, and this first part of verse 8. Not only does he pray, Lord, hear me, but he prays, Lord, hold me. Verse number 5, he says, hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps Slip not. Hey, folks, we're all moving. Amen. We're all moving. We're all moving. And we need God's help. He says, hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not. Boy, we're not careful. Without God's help, we can slip. We can fall. Amen. You know, and, and we will if we do not uh, give things to the Lord. All right? And uh, what he's saying here is, Lord, whatever it takes to keep me in the right path, Lord, hold me, hold me, and I'll know it'll be all right if you hold me. It doesn't matter what Saul says. It doesn't matter what Saul does, Lord, if you hold me. Amen. You know, are we willing to let the Lord hold us? Can I say this? It is far harder. Come here, come here, Rabbi. I'm not going to hold you. <laughs> I thought about it, and then I thought against it. But can I say this? It is far harder to say, Lord, hold me, than it is to say, Lord, hear me. You know what? Because uh, let's, let's pretend uh, that... Um, that Evan's God. I'm going to say pretend that I'm God, but I'll let Evan be God. And you know, I can I can be far away from God and say, Lord, help me, hear me. But you know what? If I were to say, Lord, hold me, guess what? It's close, isn't it? It's close. Now, that's good. That's protection. That's provision. 
Do you know what? You're saying, God, I want you to see everything too, amen? You may be seated. Lord, hold me. Is what he prayed. Lord, hold me. And, uh, and, and, and we think about, and I want to keep reading here. He says, verse number five, hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. And then he says, keep me as the apple of the eye. You know, we, we, we live in a world tonight that's out of control. Yeah. We live in a world tonight that's unleashed. I mean, you, you know, you want to uh, you want to see where we are in America tonight? Read Romans chapter number one. Amen. That's where we are. And, and where the Bible says God gave them up, God gave them up, and God gave them over to a reprobate mind. We have a reprobate mind in our country tonight. That's where our world is today. Our, our world <coughs> does not want God uh, telling them what to do. I heard uh, that uh, I did not see uh, the advertisement, praise the Lord, but I guess there was some uh, advertisement about Jesus. I've seen a little bit of that advertisement that Jesus gets you. That's, it's garbage, is what it is. Yeah, it's garbage. It's, it's garbage, all right? But even that, even that, I mean, the most milk toast, watered down thing, you know, that Jesus is touchy feely and, you know, whatever else they want to believe and all that. You know, that we have politicians uh, aghast that even his name was mentioned during the Super Bowl. You know, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's where we are tonight. That's where we are in our country. They don't want anything to do with God. Right. They don't even want his name mentioned unless it's taking it in vain. They don't want to, they don't want to think about God. They don't want to think about him at all. All right. And so, uh, but what do we need? <laughs> we need revival. Revival comes to individuals. Revival comes when we return to the Bible truth of the holiness of God. That's revival. Now, there are times of crisis and difficulty, and we want to defend ourselves. We want to lash out. We want to say something we shouldn't. You know, we ought to say, Lord, hear me, and Lord, hold me. And when he holds us, friend, we do not need to fear. Amen. We do not need to fear. You know, a lot of people, you know, they say, well, I just, you know, I just want away from everything. Well, friend, listen, you'd be better off in Market Square or Times Square in New York City with God holding you than in Siberia without God holding you. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. It's not geography that we need, it's God that we need. Yeah. We need him holding us, all right? And uh, and so, uh, again, you think about David. I mean, th this guy's a warrior. I mean, he's ready to, I'm sure he's ready to fight and fight Saul. And by the way, there is a time to fight. There is, but you better be sure <laughs> God's in it and, and what you're fighting is God's will. All right, and so I'm sure in his own, he wanted to take matters in his own hands. He wanted to, to do it in his own strength. But what's he do? Lord, hear me, and Lord, hold me. And then number three, and finally this evening, he says, Lord, hide me. Hide me. He says in verse number eight, keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Great verses commentary on that would be Colossians chapter 3. Verse 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, now listen, and your life is hid with Christ Amen. in God. Amen. We are hid with him. Again, he's not saying, Lord, hide me from the people. He's saying, Lord, hide me in thee. Hide me in thee. Hide me in, in thy protection. Hey, hey, listen. You do realize tonight the devil would love to take you to hell. He would. Amen? Amen. Hey, every single one of you. Hey, listen. If he could, he would. Every single one of us. Amen? Yep. You know why he can't? If you're saved, because you're hidden in Christ. Amen. Amen. We're safe in Christ. 
We're safe in the Lord, all right? And, and praise God when we get saved. Hallelujah. We understand uh, that we are sinners, uh, hell bound and hell deserving that Christ died for us. And, and the, the moment we ask him to forgive us and we, and we receive his salvation, his forgiveness, we repent of our sins, we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are placed under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Under his blood. And we are hidden in him. He says, hide me, Lord. Hide me, Lord. My, another thought I want to think about that before we close here this evening where he says, hide me, is that is that when we are hidden, Christ can be seen. Mm -hmm. Christ can be seen. Interesting thought there. Um, you know, John the Baptist. I mean, 400 years of silence from Alakai to Matthew. Right? 400 years of silence. And then, man, there was a noise. I mean, there was the Shekinah glory and all that. But you know what? There was also this noise. Repent! Repent! Right? John the Baptist. I like what one preacher said. He ate honey, but he didn't preach it. Amen. Repent! Right? And you know what? He had this following. He had this following, didn't he? And Jesus, he says, Behold the Lamb of God has taken away the sin of the world. And that crowd, by the way, John was a good preacher. They went from following him to following Amen. him. Amen. Amen. Right. What's John's commentary on that? John 3, verse 30. He must increase, yep. but I must decrease. Right. Amen. And we have a lot of man worship even in our movements. Yep. God help us. We need to get our eyes on the Lord. Hide me. Hide me. You know, people don't need to see me. People need to see Christ. People don't need to see you. People need to see the Lord. Now let's keep going here. Look at verse number nine of Psalm 17. We'll finish out these few verses here in a couple minutes. Verse number nine, he says, from the wicked that oppress me, David said, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about. He said, David, David said, people want me dead. Think of that. People want me dead. Wow, that's, that's something. And, and again, look at verse number 10. He says they are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They speak proudly. They're puffed up and proud and boastful. They think that they can take care of everything. Boy, that, again, that, that is so permeable in our, on our society today, is it not? Verse 11, they have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. He's, then he goes on to talk about prey there. He's talking about, he uses the description here about hunter bowing down, looking for some, some tracks, some fresh tracks. He's, he, he, David said, I'm, I'm the hunted here. I'm, I'm the prey here. They're on the, the prowl for me. It feels like any moment there, you know, it's like when we go out hunting, we're looking for those fresh tracks or, uh, you know, or, you know, and, and we see that and we say, well, that's a fresh, let's follow that. Let's go out to that. We're in pursuit of that. That's what David is using as a description here. He says, they're, they're hot on my trail, it seems like. Verse 12, like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver, boy, this is amazing, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Isn't that amazing? I love that. You know, these, these wicked people think they're doing their own thing. You know what they're doing? They're fulfilling the scriptures of the Amen. Lord God. Yeah. They really are. They really are. All right. Um, you know, these people uh, leaving the King James Bible and, and the apostasy, the falling away, from, uh, they're not denying scripture. They're, uh, they are, but they're fulfilling scripture too, aren't they? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked this earth, it was his enemies that probably fulfilled as much scripture as his friends. Right. Did. I and mean, that's amazing. You see, that's just like our God. The wicked is his sword. That's, that's amazing to me. And, uh, you know, and uh, you know, everything we see going on around us is just right on. You know, again, I'll say it again. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. <clears throat> Things are not falling apart, folks. Things are falling together. Yeah. They are falling in place. Amen. All right. And uh, nothing of this is taking God by surprise. Now look at verse 14. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life. 
and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. How many people are so blessed and don't even realize it was God that gives them the blessings? Right? I mean, it's all from his hand, isn't it? Amen. It's all from his hand. How sad. How sad that they, they, they don't even know it. He says they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. The Lord has been so good that they don't even recognize it. They don't even know that it is him. But verse 15, he says, hey, and they can do all that. And then David says, ask for me. Amen. And here's the thing. We, we can't answer for them. Yeah. Amen. I've never, I've never met Joe Biden. I've never met Kamala Harris. I've never met those folks. Amen. Probably never will. Amen. Now, I can't, I can't change them. I can't change AOC. <coughs> I can't change any of those, any of those folks. I, I can't. Right? You know what? You know who I can change? This guy. As for me. As for me. I will behold thy face in righteousness. Hey, I can be right with the Lord. I can walk right with the Lord. I can be in prayer. Amen. I can be in prayer. I can be right with the Lord. I can ask God to help me not sin with my mouth. I can be in the word of God every day so I don't get devoured, so I don't slip, so I don't fall. I can draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to me. I can ask him to hold me. I can ask him to hear me. I can ask him to hide me. I can ask him to help me. Amen. I can do that. And you know what? No matter anything that's going on around me, I can have victory. I can have peace. I can have joy. I can have purpose. I can have a slice of heaven even on this earth. And then look at verse 15. Hey, friend, you know, for the lost people, it only gets worse and worse. But for the child of God, it just gets gooder and gooder and gooder. <laughs> now notice, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. And then he says, I shall be satisfied. When I awake with thy likeness. Amen. Amen. You know what you're going to be like one of these days? Jesus. Amen. That pretty good? That's really Amen. good. Amen. That's really good. Amen. And by the way, you ain't never going to. I know that's bad English. Okay. You are never. <laughs> you ain't never. Amen. I like it. Hey, you ain't never going to be satisfied in this life. The day of your death will be the greatest day of your life. Because you're going to die on this earth. You're going to sleep on this side. You're going to wake on that side. And that's when you're going to be satisfied. I will awaken with thy likeness. But in the meantime, what do we need to do? Lord, keep me as the apple of thine eye. Lord, I want to be a blessing to you. Lord, I want, I want you to, when you see me, say, hi. Ah, there she is. There he is. There's such a blessing to me. There's such an encouragement, such a joy, their love for me and their heart for me. And boy, just be what the Lord has for us. Well, I'm glad that we can have a close walk with him, even in this wicked and filthy world. Amen. Hey, let them do. Let them say what they want. As for me, Lord, hear me, hold me, and hide me. Let's bow our hands for prayer.